Hey guys, Oscar Combs here with the ISO 9001 group. Today, we're going to talk about five lessons that we can learn from the Boeing 737 MAX 9 door failure. On January the 5th, 2024, a Boeing 737 MAX 9 door fell off at 16,000 feet in the air. Talk about a nonconformity. Let's talk about it. All right, so let, let's talk about just what, what happened in this incident at a high level, and then we'll talk about the five lessons. So on January the 5th, 2024, at 5.07 p.m., Alaska Airlines flight number 1282 took off from the Portland International Airport, okay? They were heading to Ontario, California, and they had 171 passengers on board. Now, they had reached altitudes of 16,000 feet when the door fell off. They call it a door plug, but basically, it's a plug for a empty space for a um, exit that they don't use. So they use what they call a door plug, which is basically a door. So the door fell off. All right. And this is for a Boeing 737 MAX 9, which had only been in operations in October 31st, 2023. Now, that's very important, right? Because... The Boeing 737 MAX 8 is the one responsible for um, two plane crashes. And so the MAX 9 is the improved model. The um, two plane crashes killed like 356 people um, back in 2018. All right, so this is the improved model in 2024, and the door is falling off. So what is a door plug? So a door plug is really meant to be a permanent seal of additional unused exits that are designed on the plane, right? So they call it a door plug. So can you imagine you being on this plane and you guys are at 16,000 feet and the door falls off? And so you can imagine just all the pressure and, and all of those other issues going on. So luckily, no one was killed. No one was severely injured, but it made the news. And it was very traumatic for everyone involved, including um, the passengers, of course, the crew, um, Alaska Airlines, and also um, Boeing, and also people on the ground were impacted. So we'll talk about it. So let's talk about the five lessons that we can learn from this incident. So the first lesson is that we need to understand that nonconformities have impacts, right? Nonconformity, the, the nonconformity in this case is the door failure, the door falling off. This door fell into the yard of a of a teacher, right? So it fell on the on the all the way down to the ground over sixteen thousand feet and landed in the yard of just a unsuspecting person in her backyard. Now, what if she was out there doing something, or you know, of course that door could have, would have killed someone if if that door would have landed on someone. Alaska Airlines, they had to ground 65 of their 737 MAX 9 airplanes. So could you imagine the disruption in all of the flights and all of the money loss, um, the money that they had to spend? They grounded the flights, all of the flights, to perform inspections. Now, we're going to talk about that later. Now, the FAA grounded 170 737 MAX 9s globally. So now we have this one incident 
not only impacting Alaska Airlines, but impacting all airlines globally. Okay, now that's pretty important. So sometimes we need to understand that our nonconformity in our company can impact someone globally, can have a global impact, guys. Sometimes I know we don't think about that. So nonconformities are more than paperwork. Sometimes we think about nonconformities as just being paperwork, or why do we have to fill out this form? We're filling out the form, guys, because we are trying to document our nonconformities. We're trying to really understand the impacts of the nonconformity. Um, if there are similar nonconformities that have occurred, because if it happened, if you had a nonconformity on a certain part, chances are, and you ship that out to previous customers and you found this nonconformity, chances are, you have that nonconformity in other on other parts. So we need to think about or just in other areas if we're talking thinking about processes, right? Because nonconformities are more than just product related. Many nonconformities, product nonconformities stem from process nonconformities, guys. So we, we have to take nonconformities serious. It's not just paperwork. And then we also, as I mentioned, we have to make sure that when we have a nonconformity, now just like they're doing here, they grounded all of the 737 MAX 9s because that door failure could occur on those planes as well because similar models, same design, everything of that nature. So we have to keep that in mind when we are... Um, looking at our nonconformities. All right, the second lesson we can learn from this incident is that your supply chain can damage your brand and cause your company money. Your, your suppliers. It could just be one supplier that could have a, a quality failure on their end and you're using their product, providing their product to your customers, just like these airlines are doing. The airline is using Boeing purchases Boeing planes to use in their airline to fly their customers. So the same thing for you. You purchase material parts from a supplier to use in your production or sometimes to provide that directly to your customer. So your supply chain can damage your brand and can cause your company money. Now, Let's keep in mind that the, the passengers involved in this incident, you know, when they're riding the plane, they are customers of Alaska Airlines, right? So Alaska Airlines is the one that has to deal with all of these um, claims, insurance claims, injuries, things of this nature, right? And also they took the hit to their image and to their company as well. So so did Boeing, because Boeing has been in the news quite, quite a bit lately for several quality issues. Now, we don't underestimate the importance of vetting your suppliers, right? That's how you can prevent some of these things. Vetting your suppliers, doing supplier evaluations, doing supplier audits, going on site to evaluate your suppliers, go visit their floor. You know, forget just getting a piece of paper or an ISO certificate or, you know, filling out a questionnaire. Sometimes, especially on those critical suppliers, you need to get up and go to their location and see what's really going on for yourself. It's very important. All right, guys, let's talk about our third lesson that we can learn from this Boeing incident. Don't assume just because your supplier is a big company that they don't have quality issues. I hear that all the time. Well, you know, they're a big company. You know, we they don't respond to us. They won't uh, answer our um, questionnaire. Or No, this is your supplier. You have to go vet your supplier, do your inspections on your supplier, do your evaluations on your supplier. 
And just because they are a large company does not mean that they don't have quality issues. And when they have those issues, it's going to impact your company. So often, sometimes the larger companies are the ones that you really have to pay attention to because they become a bit complacent sometimes, right? And so you just cannot assume because it's a large company that they will not um, give you problems and cause risk in your supply chain. So lesson number three, don't assume just because your supplier is a big company that you don't have to monitor them. Fourth lesson, receiving inspections are crucial. Crucial, guys. Now, this Boeing plane was delivered to Alaska Airlines on October 31st, 2023. So Alaska Airlines did not, they probably didn't feel like they needed to do a heavy receiving inspection, right? A very thorough one because this is a brand new plane. Um, it was had gone through final inspection by Boeing before it was delivered. So they didn't probably feel the need to, to do that. Well, we we should always make sure that, that we're doing thorough receiving inspections at all times, especially on critical things. Now, after the incident on January the 5th, um, Alaska Airlines, they performed an inspection, a very thorough inspection on all 65 planes. You see, sometimes we get caught up, well, we don't have time to do this, or everything should be good already. You know, Boeing checked it. Now you see Alaska Airlines, after the incident, they found the time, they found the money to slow down and do an inspection on all 65 planes. Guys, sometimes foresight can be 2020. You know, we say hindsight is 2020. No, you can slow down and have some foresight and catch things also. Foresight can also be 2020. Let's focus on doing that moving forward. Let's focus on changing this whole paradigm that, oh, that was hindsight is 2020. No, make foresight 2020. All right, so these visual inspections, they're good, but sometimes you have to go beyond visual inspection. You have to... Make sure that you are performing um, validations, um, tests. Sometimes you, you may need to even do destructive testing or non-destructive testing. You know, sometimes you may need to tear things apart that you receive to get behind the panels, make sure all the bolts are tight. Yeah, that was one of the things that United, uh, United Airlines, which is another customer of Boeing, um, United performed inspections on their plane and they found some loose bolts on that same door. So they're still investigating why this, this all happened, but sometimes you need to do more than just a visual inspection when you receive things, guys. So let's make sure we do that. Fifth lesson we can learn is active leadership counts. One of the big things we talk about in ISO all the time is leadership. Now, after the incident, the Boeing CEO, Mr. Dave Calhoun, he had the time to, to hold an all-employee safety meeting. And what he told him in that meeting is that when it comes to the safety of our products and services, every decision, every action matters. And when serious accidents like this occur, it is critical for us to work transparently with our customers and regulators to understand and address the causes of the event and to ensure that they don't happen again. Now that sounds great, but I wanna know if Mr. Calhoun is having these types of meetings uh, frequently. Now, I understand he's a CEO, so you may not have, don't have time to have these types of meetings all the time, but how often is he having these types of meetings before we have this incident? See guys, a lot of these things, we have to be proactive. It's one of the seven habits of highly effective people is being proactive. 
not being reactive, have these leadership discussions and, and, and all employees on deck discussions before we have a problem. So I want to encourage you to ensure that your leadership in your company is fully engaged, is fully demonstrating leadership when it comes to quality. Now, in his statement, he mentioned that when it comes to the safety of our products and services, well, I mean, yeah, safety is an issue, but this is most likely a quality problem. Quality issue. Could be a process issue, right? Maybe you have the safety incident occurred because poor quality. So here he's putting the emphasis on, on safety of products and services where he probably should have focused on the quality of products and services. All right, guys, so those are five lessons that we can learn from the Boeing 737 MAX 9 door falling off. Now, you didn't think you could learn something from that, right? I gave you five things that we all can learn. So guys, let me know what you think about, for one, the, the Boeing incident in general. Let me know what you think about that. And let me know what you think about these five lessons that, that I've um, summarized here. And maybe you have some lessons that you can take away from the incident. Feel free to drop your comments or your notes below. Hey guys, take a second, like the video, subscribe to our channel, share this video. Somebody needs to hear what we're talking about. Oscar Combs here with the ISO 9001 Group, helping organizations improve their operations and reduce their risk. Talk to you soon now. Bye-bye.